Okay, so now you have completed the main body of your blanket, it's time to add the lovely envelope border. Um, you're going to need several little bits and pieces of accessories to help you with this. Um, stitch markers aren't absolutely essential, but they are a really, really big help to help you with your counting. So I definitely recommend a nice pile of standard stitch markers. And also, we're going to be marking a corner stitch, which is can be a little bit tricky with these ones. So if you've got any like these with the sort of lobster claw, two of those would be really helpful as well. Um, yeah, obviously, if they're all like that, then that's fine. You can use the same. But say if you've got two with the lobster claw, that will really help. Um, um, before we get started on actually making the border, we just need to do a little bit of preparation. And for that, we are going to need our scissors and a tapestry needle um, just to obviously tidy up the little ends before we start okay so at the moment um, where you've got your overlay mosaic parts of the cowl you'll see you've got all these these ends here which are the, these are what we're obviously now we're going to be doing the envelope border to sort of sandwich them in between now with a yarn like this with the the acrylic yarns we're using here they're probably absolutely fine like that secured because we started with a standing Oh, with a, like a slip knot on our hook so that was that secured the first end and at the other end we probably fastened them off so they are pretty secure anyway but if you're using a slightly slipperier yarn it can be worth and I always do it anyway just to be completely certain it can be worth just tying these together in pairs so say so just literally pick up two ends tie a double knot so and go along the edge like so so yes it does take a little while the preparation does take a little while but what you really really don't want is to find that after all putting all your hard work into making this blanket that you find that over time um, the ends come unraveled so we definitely don't want that so a stitch in time saves nine as they say so when you've gone around and tied all of those together like so we can now just trim them to about three centimeters or sort of just over an inch like so so go along your overlay sections like so tidying up your ends there to prepare that when you come to the inset sections there are a lot less ends obviously because we carried the yarn up the side but you do still have a few ends ends to deal with so what we did if you remember when we were doing um the ends we just tucked when every time we change the yarn we just tuck that first two stitches underneath the ones we were working with so what we're now going to do and you'll see they're always actually in pairs because wherever you fastened off one color two rows later you joined a new one so you've got your two ends like so so you can either weave them in as normal or as we're adding an envelope border and to keep the back as neat as possible just try just pick up your tapestry needle and just thread that through to the end don't pull it too tight just to tuck it in so we're back out to the edge of the blanket again do the same with the neighboring one and now we can just gently tie these two together don't pull them too tight because if you do that'll rush up the edges of your blanket but just tie them together like so there we go okay and then you can cut off to there and that will again be hidden in the border so yeah, just go along um, all around your blanket doing that, making sure all of your ends are nice and secure, and then we will come back and actually start making the okay, border. So now you've got all your ends properly secure. Um, we are going to start with the foundation round of the border. Now if you've done an envelope border before, um, you may have started with a round of slip stitches. Now you can still do that if you want to, but personally I find that quite fiddly, so I do mine slightly differently. Um, and, and that will be, we'll be using some front post stitches or raised trebles to get started. Now before we do that, I just need to explain, if you look at the written pattern, you'll see at the start of the foundation round instructions, there's a table there, which says part six, five, four, three, two, one. And it shows you along there, the, the top row of that, underneath the titles shows you the number of stitches that were or the number of rows rather that there were in each section um, 
And then you will see underneath, for some of the sections, it's saying that your border actually needs to have less. Now the reason for that is, if you remember back to when you did your gauge swatches, the overlay um, sections, the squares were sort of, the, the stitches were square. You had basically the same number of rows as you did stitches to 10 centimetres. So for those sections, you'll notice if you look at the charts, so for instance, part five, it tells you that there were 45 um, rows when we did the pattern and you are going to need 45 stitch, stitches in that section. When it comes to the inset sections, you'll actually notice that you had more rows to 10 centimetres than you did stitches. I think it was about 22. So how that works, if it, basically to stop the border being wavy, we need to do um, less than one stitch per row in the inset sections. So that's what that's for. So it's telling you in part six, for instance, there were 62 rows to this last pattern, um, but we're only going to be making 47 stitches there. So that is basically one, we're missing every sort of fourth row when we do the border. So keeping an eye on that table. We'll now get started. So, we're, it's important to start, to make the table make sense, it's important to start on the last row of the blanket you worked. So here we are, up at the top here. Um, but on the wrong side, so you've got the wrong side facing you. So then we're going to pick up, pick up our CC1 or XX2 colour. I'm not actually going to put, um, it's going to be a standing um, raised treble or front post treble if you prefer um, but I'm not going to start with a slip knot because I like to keep um, like to keep it nice and neat when we come to join at the end it'll be neater without having the knot there so we're just going to wrap that round so keep hold of that yarn round hook and now you can start at any um, any stitch apart from the sort of last three or the first three on on each end so any stitch in the middle we're just going to start and I'll do it quite close to the corner because then I can show you the corner easily so we're just going to do front post treble around like I say any stitch apart from those edge ones one two okay so there's our first stitch so you'll then carry along on this top row until there's three stitches remaining Okay, so oh, we've now got three stitches remaining. So what we're now going to do, round the next stitch, we need to create a corner for our, our border. So what we need to do is we're going to be working, actually to keep, just another little explanation, to keep um, the stitch out, we need to end up with exactly the same number of stitches on, our, on the top row, including the corner ones. On the top and bottom as we started with and just to make the corners of the border neater um, you will find that you'll probably have effectively like five stitches at the end we're not working around so to get that right we're now going to make three front post trebles around there two three and that will then make the stitch count right on the top row now because we've done three we're normally in the corner we're going to be doing two trebles for each side with the chain space in between but on two of them as I say to make the stitch count correct we're actually going to have the three so on those ones we this is where these other these little stitch markers with the lobster claws come in so if we pull those out okay before you actually work around it, it's really easy when you flip it over to see the stitch you want to mark. So we will just get our marker, okay, and we'll pop that round there like so. So we've marked that stitch so we'll know where it is. And now what we can do is come back to this side and work our raised trebles or front post trebles there okay then two chain to the corner and then another two raised trebles around the same stitch and I've just realized I didn't actually mention the hook size to you before 
Now for the main blanket you may remember that I was using a three and a half millimeter hook for my inset sections and a four millimeter for my overlay sections. Now if you prefer a sort of softer squishier builder you can actually use the smaller of those two hooks to make your border so you could use the three and a half mil. I kind of like it a little bit firmer so I'm actually using for this a 3.25 millimeter hook. So if you've got one of them that might be quite a good idea. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so now I've done the corner, we now need to start working down this edge. And remember, this first section here is inset mosaic. So we're going to be looking at that table and seeing that we're going to want to end up at the end of this inset section with 47 stitches. And that doesn't include these two we've just done here. So it's 47 more stitches. So what we do to create the stitches here, if you see, I'm just going to work around see there so we're actually working around it's like between the second and third stitches from the end we're working around the row end and we're going to do our front post treble there okay and then we do the same around the next row so you may think that this looks like there's way too much um, left here that I do leave quite a little quite a, a, I said I had the extra egg, edge stitch a lot of people will only do one edge stitch but for me and certainly when you come to like the overlay sections for me that's just a little too close to the end and for a security point of view I like to have that extra stitch between but if you were doing this border around a pattern with only one edge stitch then all of this would move that way one okay so we've got now we've got another raised treble there so that's three if you remember i said we're going to be missing basically every fourth stitch now what you can do before you carry on anymore just flip it over and we'll check that the other side the stitches look nice and neat okay so if you see this is where our corner is and then it goes nicely around so this is what we want we're going to be keeping a track so that these stitches keep in a nice straight line Okay, so we've done our first three, so we're now not going to work around this stitch because we're going to miss every fourth one. So what we'll do, just make our next raised treble around there. And then just do that like so. Okay, so we've done three, we're going to miss the next one. I do another little cluster of three and I say if you're unsure about your line all you need to do is just flip that over and check that you've got a nice straight line on the back okay so you just carry on along until you get to the end of your overlay section uh, inset section and I'll meet you there. So I have now done my 47 stitches, remembering not to count the two that we did in the corner. So from there, I've now got 47 stitches and I have double checked and please do double check because that will save you a lot of hassle in the long run to make sure that you have the right number of stitches now. So it takes a little bit of time to get this set up, but it's so worth doing it right. Okay, so now I've got the 47 stitches. This is where the stitch marker comes in. So we just pop that in there. So we now know we've got 47 stitches in this first section. So we don't need to we don't need to count that again um, when we come to just make sure we've got the right number of stitches at the end of the row of this side of the blanket. Okay, so the next section is a little bit fiddlier because we've got to make sure we hold all these ends out of the way but it's easier as well because we're not worrying about missing any stitch so we're literally now just going to work one double crochet oh, double I've gone into US terms one raised treble around the end of each or like that thing these row ends there between the second and third stitches in from the edge okay so just keep going around there and this is actually i'm going to just show you why i do the extra edge stitch when we did the 
inset sections you'll notice there seemed quite a lot of fabric there and that's because we've actually got our turning chains so that makes that thicker but when we now get to the overlay sections it looks like we're a lot closer to the edge where we're not it's just the way the stitches work so if i hadn't had the extra edge stitch what we would be having to work around now would effectively be there which to me seems very very close to the edge of the blank and i'm kind of it scares me so <laughs> this is why i add the extra, extra edge stitch but it's it's a personal taste okay so as i said just carry along this overlay section working one raised treble or a front post if you prefer around every row end and then I will see you when you get to the end of this overlay section then we're ready to do the next inset okay so I've just now done 45 stitches along the edge there and that has got me nicely to the end of this overlay section so again I've double checked always just count again just to be on the safe side and I'm going to pop a marker in there again. So we're going. No, I don't need to count that section anymore. Okay, so the next one, as you know, is an overlay section. So just carry on along like that, remembering this time to miss every fourth row end. So if you're doing the small blanket, you will have, you need to have, end up with 41 stitches along part four. And if you're doing the other sizes, it's going to be 40. So obviously that will just mean some little bit of an adjustment with like not missing a stitch where we have before. But just say, as long as you get to the end, you've got the right number of stitches. If you ended up um, having sort of four or five stitches where you didn't miss, it's not going to make any difference at all. So yeah, carry on along the edge until you get right down to the bottom. And then I will meet you when you get to the end of your part one rows. Um, and I'll show you the next corner okay I've now got down to the end of my first sort of long edge of the border um, so you can see we're right down to the end if you find that to get the 42 stitches you need to just like miss one or something along there it can it can happen because obviously with missing the the stitches every fourth stitch in the inset mosaic you could be out slightly but do just make sure you've got your 42 stitches and you end where I have here, okay, which is right next to that bottom edge, okay. So what we're now going to do is we need to make our corner again at this bottom corner. So what we're going to do is this, so it's a bit tricky because obviously I'm using the same colour on the border as I did to start with there. But if you can see going to do our raised treble so we've got like that we're going to go round here okay so around that bottom stitch so one two raised trebles there two chain and then another two raised trebles if you want to just make sure that it looks nice and neat on the other side again it might be a bit tricky to see because we're working in the same color but we'll just turn that over and hopefully you can see that we had this was down the side edge and then we've gone nicely round the corner there's our corner stitch okay so we've only actually done if you notice on, on the previous corner we had three raised trebles two chain and then two on this corner we're only doing two of each that's to get the stitch count right there so what we now need to do we do, we're not going to mark this corner we're only marking the ones where we've had to do an extra stitch so now what you do along the bottom see we've already worked around that sort of step second stitch in we're now just going to work raised trebles all the way along so keep doing that until you get, like we did at the top, until you get to three stitches before the end. And then we will do the next corner. Okay. okay so I've now wor worked along that bottom edge of my table runner. So what we now want to do is to a little check of the stitch count. So I've worked as the pattern says to the last three stitches before the end if you can see there we go 
so I've got one, two, three remaining at the edge. And what I, because I'm doing the runner, if you actually just check at the end of the instructions for the um, foundation round, you'll see it gives you the stitch counts that you should have on each side and the top and the bottom. So as I'm doing the runner, I should have 53 stitches, which is exactly the same number that I actually had when I completed the blanket, uh, the runner in my case, because that was 53 stitches wide. So it is quite easy to maybe just, I don't know, start around the, this first corner in a slightly different position. So you may find that you don't need the extra one. So this is where it's really important to just check. So including this time, including this two stitches in, on a, in our corner. For the runner, you should have 50 stitches, and I have. If you're doing the small blanket, you will have 146 stitches. If you're doing the medium you should have 194 and if you're doing the large blanket you said two you should have 242 now if you find you've actually got one stitch more than that which is possible don't don't pull it all out don't frog it back just in this corner instead of doing the three raised trebles two chain two just do a normal um two raised trebles two chain two raised trebles um like we did in the other corners so if you if that's the case then don't mark it so if you find that you have an extra stitch here don't mark this corner only mark this corner if you're going to add that extra stitch because it's just say the marker is there just to tell you that you'll need to do another extra stitch on the other side we now get to our next corner and as i said i've checked that i've got the right number so i now know i need to do oh, we're going to mark it first because that we find that easier don't we because i'm doing that extra stitch in the corner I'm going to pick up my little marker and just whoops place that round there so that when I come to do the the front border I'll know exactly where I've got to do that extra stitch so it's now going to be one two three raised trebles, two chain, and then another two all around that same, ooh, all around that same stitch. One, two, get there. So now we are just going to basically Reading that table at the top of the foundation row instructions, we are now going to work down up the other side of the blanket. So you'll be, instead of starting at the left with part six, obviously we're now, this is part one on there. So read it from right to left and just do the number of stitches it stayed and mark at the end of each one again. So yeah, you should be able to now carry along up this edge of the blanket and I will meet you at the next corner okay so I've almost finished this foundation row now I've now got to the last corner we've got to do so if you can see the 47th stitch for part six finishes right there so right next to the top cover that up there we go so what we're now going to do is obviously the same things we've been doing in the corner so we have got, we're going to go, if you see, around this stitch. So the very next stitch across, we've got two trebles, two chain, and another two trebles. So, whoop, get there. Okay, so that's that last corner done again. Just to check how it looks from the front you can see gone up there and now gone right around the corner so it's a nice nice right angle there okay now what it's worth doing um it's just double checking that you're going to end up with the fifth the correct number of stitches again so a little bit like we did at the bottom um, we obviously got to make sure that we end up with basically the same number of stitches that we had across our runner or blanket to start with. So for me, that'll be 53. Now on this one, we can't adjust at the end if we are out slightly. Um, 
so because we've already done the three stitches at the end of this row so what it's worth doing is actually counting across now to check that you would have the correct amount okay so if we just count and include the corner stitches so obviously i've got two four six seven there and then just count all of the stitches in between eight 10 12 so count that across and make sure you've got the correct number if you haven't if you find that you would end up with 54 stitches then what you'll want to do is just take this first stitch that we worked and just move it across a bit and if you would have ended up with 52 it's it's obviously the other way so yeah just double check that and when you've done that well i'll we'll carry on now you can pause the video if you need to there okay because i've already checked mine <laughs> so i've already checked it and made sure that yeah actually it all does end up exactly as the pattern says so that's great right so just like we did at the bottom end when we were doing it we're just going to work our raised trebles around every stitch okay um, yeah, and when you get to this point, don't actually fasten off. I will just just in, we're going to do an invisible join there. So just in case you're not aware of how to do that, I will just take you through that. So see you in a moment. Okay, so I've now got to that last stitch. So I've met up with where I started, and say just in case you don't know how to do um, a invisible join, it's really easy. I'll just show you. So what we do, I've got my loop here. I haven't normally if I was fastening off, I would pull that through, but I haven't done that this time. This time what we're going to do is actually pull this out like so. So that is now, you can see it's kind of like it starts there. So that is going to be the start of our little stitch. So now we thread that on on our tapestry needle. And what we need to do, we're not going to join here. We are now effectively going to make a sort of a, the loop, the stitch, to replace this one we started with. So what you actually need to do, if you can see, so that's this is why I didn't put a knot in there because it, it makes it a nice smooth edge. So what we've got to do, we've got to go over this loop here. So we're going to insert our needle like so. Okay, so when you do that, you can see what you've just done is basically replace this top loop with a new one. So now what we're going to do, you need to now insert your hook back in your last stitch again and I find if I go down through that sort of third loop at the back and then you pull it in and don't pull it too tight because it just now needs if you can see just done that to make this loop here the same size as all the others so now that's why this is an invisible join you can't actually see where the join was so to fasten all that off what you can do I just like to just put a, a little knot, not again, don't pull this tight, just a little knot there to make sure the ends are nice and secure. And there we go. So I just need to tidy up our ends. So I'll just come down like so. And what I tend to do here, because this, um, this sort of, this was the very top edge of our blanket that is going to be inside a border so what you can do you just work over that a couple of times and then we'll pick up this end and do the same thing so just take that down to there remember not to pull this tight because you want to leave your stitches looking nice and neat on the front Okay, so we'll do that and we'll just go this round a couple of times just to secure that we put a knot in here anyway so that is not now going to go anywhere so you can just trim them off again to about three centimeters an inch okay so that is our foundation row complete we're now going to leave this side of the border so the obviously the back of the border until we've done our patterned one on the front and um so just to explain why we've done it this way um so got that that's the back so if we now turn over and look at the front if you can see you see as we were doing we were checking that our stitches were nice or that was all nice and straight 
what will happen now when we're not, we're now going to basically work around all exactly the same stitches or the row ends that we did before and so we're going to be if you see your hook naturally wants to go below this loop and what that is going to do is create a line like this on the other side which if you can probably see there is below this so the all it is we, we will have a thin we'll have a, a line all the way around um that look kind looks kind of like back stitches on the back so i mean if you like that you can do it the other way around you don't need to do the back one at all you can start straight at the front but that's the reason why i do a foundation round first and then we turn it over to do this can't do all of the back because again you need because you're going to need to check your tension which again i will take you through okay so we're now ready to start um border one uh you will probably or uh, i recommend that you do uh, keep another stitch marker handy um for the corner chains uh, just because uh, on this first couple of rows it can be kind of difficult to see where the first corner chain is so if we pop because we will be to basically with overlay mosaic when you're doing it in a board to, to keep the corners nice and square and neat um what you tend to do is you don't work it work into your chain space like you usually would but actually into the chains themselves so obviously you need to know exactly where the first and second chain is so the little margus can come in handy for that and what we're going to be doing is whichever size hook that you use to do the foundation round on the back you're now going to be using for the front border so if you decide if you took the sort of softer border option and you were using the smaller hook that you used in your main blanket and use that or for me i just dropped down sort of half a size to a 3.25 okay so we're using still using um cc1 or xx2 whichever you um whichever color way you're doing and we're going to start again with a stat this time we're doing um double crochets rather than trebles around the edge they're still going to be around the post of the stitch and it's always every time every every double crochet you do every front post or raised double crochet you do will be around exactly the same stitch as you used before so where we missed you can see where we missed missed a row end on the inset parts we are going to make sure we miss the same ones now that way we'll end up with the correct number of stitches okay so we're starting with a standing double crochet and again i'm not going to put a knot in there i'm just going to twist it around and now this is why we marked any corners which had that extra raised treble in them we've put the marker in so we know that we need to do the same extra stitch here to keep everything the same so you can do either end i'm actually just because that's where i was i'm going to start at the top here okay so just move that out of the way so what we now need to do is it can, the corners can be a little bit fiddly but bear with it so you can see that's the marked stitch so what we're going to do i'm going to start around there we've already got where the five stitches went round before so there's a lot going on on that one stitch so start there with a double crochet then two chain and as i said it might you'll probably find it very useful to just pop a marker in that first chain and then so it's very crowded in this corner but what we're now going to do because this was the one where we had three trebles there we need to make sure we do an extra double crochet here so that will be two so we're not going we're at most corner the, the normal corners will be one double crochet two chain one double crochet but on the ones where you have got the marker so you did the extra stitch just remember after your two chain you actually then need to do two double crochets okay so it's all a little bit fiddly to start with but that will look super when it's done so now all we're going to do is right the way around the blanket we are going to work a raised double crochet to the front around every single stitch or row end that we used before so all the way across here it's just going to be a raised, uh, a raised double crochet 
or front post if you prefer. So carry on like so. When you get to the next corner, that's that's a standard corner, which didn't have the extra stitch. So when you get there, you'll still be working around. Just have a little route around to find the one that's got all of the all of this um, stitches rather than just one. So you know that's the corner one. When you get there, it'll be one double crochet, two chain, one double crochet, and just remember to stick a marker in that first chain. Okay, so I've just come back sort of halfway round. Um, this first row with the round of the border um, just to show you that it's really really worth still double checking your stitch counts because especially where you have got um, like here where your border is is using a, a lot of the same color as in your the main body of a blank it's very easy to sort of miss one of those stitches we worked around um so just double check again and what i've just done i've just popped a marker in every 50th stitch so and double checked each one <laughs> so that's all been done there and i've now just double checked and if you look at the end of the instructions for row one uh, round one of border one you should see that on the side edges you will either have 259 stitches if you are doing the um if you're doing the runner or the medium or large blankets and if you're doing the small um blanket then you will have 179 when you finish it so i've now checked and i've actually got to see that this was now takes me to 250 so it's 252 four six eight and i'm now going to do the ninth one around the corner stitch and as that is a marked stitch we know that's where we've got to do the extra stitch because we had the three trebles on the sort of bottom or top edge of the blanket and those corners okay so we'll just do that together so yeah the, basically you will have two stitches less on this round on each side than you did for the back because they were trebles so these are double crochet so there's basically two rounds on this front border to every one that we do on the back okay so you can see where the marker is that's really handy to know that we're going to do oh again a bit fiddly because there's so many stitches worked around it already but we know because it's a marked stitch as well we're going to do one double crochet two chain and we're going to just stick a marker in you can see in that first of those two chains so we can find it easily when we come to do the next round lots of marks in the corner here and now around that same stitch we've got to do because it's a marked one we've got to do two more front post or raised double crochets okay so that is that and what we can actually do we don't need these markers anymore we can take them out and just free up a little bit in that corner so again just carry on along the bottom here working your raised double crochet front post double crochet whichever you want to call it around each stitch and what i will just show you before before I leave you to get on with the rest of the border is remember I said about um, the reason for doing the foundation round before and I sort of tried to explain the little line I'll just show you that so if we turn over hopefully you can see we now have this little row is this virtually invisible if you're using a different color um, they would show that oh sorry not the camera there if you're using a different color it would it would um, show but to be honest you might like that so yeah that's the reason for doing the foundation row first so we keep this little line on the back right so carry on around your border remembering to just work a, a front post double crochet raise double crochet around every single stitch that you did on the foundation row and I will meet you when you get to that last corner um, when we finish the round Okay, so I've now got to the end of uh, round one so I now have I've 
double checked I now have 258 stitches that I've just done along this side including including the corner ones at the start of this this side so and and if you check at uh, the the stitch count should be 259 stitches for most of the sizes but if you're doing the small blanket you should now have 170 no you should have 179 you'll have one less that you've just worked because the last one was this double crochet oh this is why i put a marker in so it's easy to see this double crochet we did here at the beginning so what we're now going to do is just slip stitch into there Okay, so now to start the next row, we're going to do a chain. Now that doesn't count as a stitch, that is just to bring our hook up to the right level. And then this is where the marker comes into its own. You can see that was the first chain on the last row. So we're going to do a double crochet into there. And if we take that out. Now I've got to do two chain and we're now going to do into the next so the second of the chains in that corner we do another double crochet oh before we do that though let's just pop our marker in that first chain again so we've got a track of where we are okay so now double crochet in there so that now completes the corner so we're working into the actual chains not into the chain spaces this is a nice simple round we are just going to do back loop double crochets all the way around like so and then when you get to the corners you do just like we did here so there will be a double crochet in the first corner chain then two chains and then another double crochet in the next corner chain to get round and then say just carry on with your back loop double crochets all the way around Okay, just a little reminder, do keep a track of your stitch counts because while we are still doing like the plainer part of the border, it's very easy to sort of lose track of where you are. So, so if you remember on round one, I popped a marker in every 50th stitch, just so I only had to count back 50 every time I was checking. And I know I'm now right on here because I've now got done my 50 stitches and I'm one stitch ahead of the marker. So that's because obviously we added an extra stitch in the um, in the second corner chain back at the start of the row. So yeah, just keep a track of, of your stitch counts. It's really important to do and it's so much easier to do that now. Take that little bit of extra time to check it now than to realise once you get to the pattern part that your stitch count is wrong and you end up having to either frog back or kind of fudge the corners. Okay, so I will see you when you get to the end of the round. So here I am almost at the end of round two. At the moment I have 259 stitches along my final edge here, um, which is obviously the stitch count for the runner, the medium and large blankets. If I was doing the small blanket, I would have 179 now. Okay, so if you actually check the stitch counts for round two, you'll see I'm supposed to have 261 when we finish. So the the 261st stitch, just have a little look there, was this one that we did at the beginning of the round. Um, yeah, if you remember, we started with one double crochet in that first corner space. So we need one more before we, we join to that one. So that will actually be, you probably can't see it so easily here because we're all doing the same colour, but it'll be more obvious on the next round when we're using a different colour. But this is basically the slip stitch that we joined the last round. So we work our last double crochet there. So that's number 260. This is a chain that we used um, at the beginning. So that didn't count as a stitch. So what we now need to do, you can see we've got the marker in the first chain. So we know we've now got to slip stitch into there. So we've now slip stitched to our starting double crochet. So that now means I've got 261 stitches down okay, that side. Okay, so it, round three is basically the same as round two, except we're going to be using our main colour. So really simple to join, just like we did when we were um, doing the inset mosaic parts on the main 
blanket you just simply pull that through that loop and then we'll just pull that down okay leave a longish tail so it's nice and secure and then what we've got to do we're going to do our our first chain which is kind of like a turning chain except we're not actually turning if that makes sense just pull that down there and now oh, I did that a little bit loosely okay so we've got our first chain and we're now going to work our double crochet into that first that first corner chain there the one that's marked okay I'm just going to pull this in nice and tight so that's how we start the corners so we can take that out of there and then we've got two chain pop that back in the first one you might not need to do that after this round because we were actually going to be starting on the the actual pattern so it'll be much more obvious when you get to the corners then but for now we'll keep marking that so I've done the two chain there and then the very next stitch around the corner we do a double crochet into that one not stitch it was the chain okay so now we are just gonna as we did before double crochet just into those back loops all the way along till we get to the corner and then it's a double crochet in the first corner chain two chain and a double crochet in the second one and then you carry on around the next side so again and keep a track again of your um stitch counts just to be absolutely certain because especially if you notice when we got to the end here um it can be a little bit tricky to see how many stitches you've got left and where to work the last few so if you keep a track of your count you can't go wrong all right i will see you when we're ready to start round four right so i've now very nearly got to the end of round three i've just got one more stitch to do and this is where it's a little bit easier now we've got the two different colors to show you where the slip stitch is you see so i need to make one more stitch and that is going to be obviously because it's the same color right in that last so that was the slip stitch at the beginning of the round so we've now got our 263rd stitch here which was actually the one we started with um, and obviously that should be um, 183 rather than 263 if you're doing the small blanket okay so we're just gonna slip stitch into that right so that's that round finished so now we need to pick up I should have said don't cut this last time I apologize if you did um, but yeah we've left our um, CC one or xx2 at the back so we now need to pick that up and we'll do it exactly the same way as we did when we actually joined the mc on the last one so i've just pulled that loop up pull that one down pull the mc down nice and close and there's our initial chain which doesn't count as a stitch so we now start round four you can see in this marked stitch marked chain so the first chain in the corner I'm going to actually not bother to mark anymore because now we're doing the the actual pattern it's a lot easier to see when you get to the end but by all means if you want to carry on marking the first chain do so so two chain and then we turn around the corner and we've got our double crochet in that second corner chain so every corner will be like that okay so now we're going to start our repeat so we have got seven back loop double crochets three four five six seven so obviously including that one in the corner that will actually be eight in total so just double check that two four six eight fantastic so now we're actually starting with the border so all we're going to now do is a front loop treble two rows down so again if you hold it nice and straight you should be able to see this is the loop i'm going to be working into so just as we did on all the other overlay we've got that there 
So if you now actually check the written pattern, you'll see that actually that seven back loop double crochets, one front loop treble, two down, is in square brackets. So you just now repeat that until you get to seven stitches before the next corner. Okay, so that is just to carry on with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven back loop double crochets, and let's say one front loop treble. So just carry that along until you get to the, like I say, seven stitches before the next corner and I'll see you there. Okay, so I have now got to my next corner. I've just got seven stitches left. Double check that. So it's nice and straightforward. You're just literally now going to carry on with your seven back loop double crochets. Three, four, five, six, seven and that takes us to our marked corner chain and again i'm not going to bother to mark them anymore i'm just going to take that out and then we make a double crochet in that chain that was marked and now we're going to turn the corner so it's going to be two chain and a double crochet in the next one and then we just start the repeat again so we start with seven back loop double crochets Three, four, five, six, seven. Just double check we haven't miscounted. It's so worth just checking. And actually, what I tend to do is just double check between each of the front loop trebles that I do have seven back loop double crochets because it is so much easier to do that as you go along then get to the end realize you're a stitch or two out and then have to search all the way back trying to find where it is so right we've got two four six eight so that's the seven at the start of the repeat plus the one that we did into that second corner chain so now we do a front loop treble so yeah you just carry on around the rest of the blanket or runner like so and then I will meet you at the last few stitches before we actually get to the end of the round and then we can do round five okay so I've now got to the last seven stitches before my final corner which is also obviously my first corner so we are gonna do one two three four five six back loop double crochets and then the seventh one as before goes into the slip stitch from the beginning or from the end of um, round, round three okay so I've now got my seven stitches there and we're just gonna slip stitch into that starting double crochet right so we're going to drop Drop our contrast yarn again and now pick up our main colour, same as we did before. Just pull the loop through, one chain, just pull that down nice and tight there. And now you may still have this marked, but I haven't, but here is my first corner chain. So I'm going to do double crochet in that, then two chain and a double crochet in the second corner chain. So you should be able to see there why we work into the chain. So rather than getting like a little sort of hole in the corner that you normally would, it's filling it in. Okay, so let's start on the next side. Now before we get to the main repeat for each side, we've just got to work one more back loop double crochet. Okay, and now you'll see there's the square brackets again. You'll see them actually on every row now of the border because that's just the way it's just the eight stitch repeat and it's telling you to do that until you get to the end because obviously you could have different um you will have different um stitch counts okay so we start that repeat with two back loop double crochets one two then we have front loop treble back loop double and another front loop treble 
and we finish our repeat with three more back loop double crochets one two three so your repeat will end on top of this front loop treble from round four and now we start the next repeat oh, just show you that. start the next repeat with two more double crochets so so you can see that's how it'll be centered over there so you'll have for your five back loop double crochets in the middle so now it's front loop treble make sure you only miss one back loop double front loop treble and end the repeat with our three back loop double crochets again okay so just carry on like that until you get to the um how many two oh right up until the next corner actually because we we if you look we actually had three there so that will take you right up to the next corner and then you can do what we always do in the corner which is one double crochet in the first chain then make two chain and then another double crochet in the second chain and then you start all over again with your one back loop double crochet before the main repeat starts so yeah you can just go now all the way around the edge of your blanket and i'll see you ready to start round six okay, so i've now just i've got up to the last repeat on the last side of round five so we'll just do that together because all we're going to is exactly the same as it was before so we start with our two back loop double crochets then make sure you're in the right place to so do your front loop treble back loop double front loop treble and then we've got one two and that last double crochet goes in there so there we are and now we would normally have um, on all of the other sides you were doing you were finishing with an extra double crochet in that first corner chain but obviously we've already done that so all we're now going to do is slip stitch in there just as we've done before okay so there's round five completed now for round six we're obviously going to drop our main color and pick up oh if i can pick it up pick up our contrast okay so there's that chain that we always do and then we're going to start as always with a double crochet in the first corner two chain and then a double crochet in the second oh hold on in the second corner chain okay so now before the main repeat starts we need to do two back loop double crochets and the repeat on this is now actually even easier than the last couple of rounds have been because it's just a four stitch repeat so it starts with three back loop double crochets one two three and then we're going to pop a front loop treble in there between the trebles we made on the last round and then we just repeat that so it's three back loop double crochets and then the next treble goes on top of this one from round that we made on round four so it's as simple as that so just carry on along working three back loop double crochets one front loop treble until you get to five stitches before the next corner and then it's going to be five back loop double crochets and then start again go all the way around and i'll see you ready to start round seven okay so i've now got to the end of round six all i've now got to do is my very last slip stitch into that first double crochet we did on the right okay so i can now pick up my main color as always one chain 
and then the same as we always do in the corner a double crochet in the first chain and make two more chains double crochet in the second chain so now before our main repeat starts we need to do three back loop double crochets so that's one two three and now we start repeat. It's another lovely simple little four stitch repeat. So that starts with one more bike loop double crochet. Then we have front loop treble. And two back loop doubles. And then we start again. So we've got one back loop double crochet. One front loop treble. And two back loop doubles okay so what we've got is basically actually much the same as we did on the last one where we will have three back loop double crochets in a row and then a front loop a front loop treble so let's just do that repeat once more so back loop double front loop treble and two back loop doubles okay so i think you should be okay now to actually carry on and complete border one so after this round there's just three more to go and when you've done that i'll come back and i'll show you how we do we complete the border so how to to make the back border and join them all together okay so i have now completed border one um which is the, the full 10 rows and just i mean you can do a slip stitch join at the end to finish it all off but as we did on the previous border I kind of think it looks nicer to just do a little invisible join and it's also easier to actually get get the stitches right in the corner when you when you come to join your two borders together so say so I've just got the last last stitch has been done in there but I haven't joined it to the beginning so just as a reminder to do an invisible join you pull it through like so so there's no actual knot but you've just got the yarn sort of coming out of the loops there then oops i'm going to thread that on a tapestry needle and what we need to do is basically what we're now going to do is effectively like this there's like create the loop so we're the last loop so that's going to kind of replace the first loop that was at the top of our starting double crochet so we don't go in here where you would if you were doing a slip stitch just take it into that first chain and round like so and don't pull it too tight because we want to make it look exactly the same as these loops here and then you just go through there and if you can go through you can see there's that other loop at the back it's just a little bit more stable and then Pull it down there we go and there is your invisible join looks just like the others so we just need to secure that at the back so did I just pull that no that's fine so we just need to secure that make sure and again don't pull this too tight to start with because you don't want that to be funny and then what we will do we'll just leave it that way and then back again like so and if you really want to be secure you can go back the other way again okay so that'll be nice and secure now don't need to cut it off particularly neatly because it's all going to be inside the border so we'll just chop it off like so okay and I've already woven in all the other ends there so that's it you just got to just make sure the ends that we created when we did the border are nice and secure again leave, leave the long bits that's fine um and yeah and that is border one complete okay so now we need to do the next border now before we do that so we start if you remember we've got our first round of it done with this foundation row uh, round on the back which we we did before we did this side now before we complete that um, what we need to do is another little tension swatch now I know nobody likes doing tension swatches but the thing is everybody sort of makes their stitches slightly differently so for some of you you'll 
you'll make your trebles just a little bit longer and some are shorter and some are kinder wider because like the chains are a little bit bigger so we need to make sure that we get the right tension on the back so the back of your border is nice and neat and it's exactly the same size as the front so all we need to do it'll only take you a couple of minutes is pick up the hook that you used to do border one so for me that was a 3.25 millimeter hook and then we're just gonna start with 22 chains so i've now just done two three four five seventeen two nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three okay so well now what we're going to do we're just going to do this first row that we now make on our tension swatch is actually going to be the equivalent of the raised trebles that we did on the back and what you may have noticed that if you do um, a, a stitch around the post a raised treble or a front post treble it tends to make it a little shorter than a normal treble because of, of going around the post you've got dropped it down so what we're going to start with is a row of half trebles so we're going to miss the first two chains and then do doesn't matter about the back bump with this we'll just do it in the normal chain because that's a bit quicker just do your half trebles until you get to the end okay put it together so what we did the first two chain there they count as the first half treble so I've now got four there we go so I've now done that first row which has now got 20 half trebles on it and now we're going to come back the other way but this time we are going to do a row of trebles so for this one we're going to start with three chain because it's a little taller turn it around and then we are just going to treble all the way back okay. so i've now done the second row of the swatch and we're just going to do two chain and then go back and do another row of half trebles and then and trebles and half trebles again so you'll have a total total of five rows when you're finished um, so that will be alternating half treble treble half treble treble half treble so when you've done done all that i will see you then okay so i've now completed my little swatch um i did not bother to fasten it off just in case this is like too big or too small and you need to make another one you may as well frog the arm and start again so what i've now done as well is i've placed two pins in there 16 stitches apart so actually there are 15 stitches between the two pins because if you look you'll see hopefully that the pins are actually in the middle of the stitch so that will give us 16 stitches we'll just double check that two four six eight ten twelve fourteen fifteen in between and then two halves of sixteen so we've now got that sorted out now what we need to do is check that the, the reason for the 16 stitches is because that is two repeats on our border so we now pick up our blanket or runner whatever you're doing and look at the border what we'll do we'll start oh, start so line up line up your first stitch with like the middle of um, the stem of the fern or tree trunk whichever it looks like to you and then line it up and it's absolutely perfect so I know that I can now use my 3.25 millimeter hook for this um, now when I've used one of the other yarns I actually found that my swatch is a little bit wider so I then dropped it down to a three millimeter hook and tried again so it all just depends really on the specific yarn you're using and maybe your tension on the day so even if you've made this is like your fifth blanket even however many you make it's always worth doing this little swatch first because there might be a difference and it'll just make it much neater at the end so that's perfect now what we need to do is make sure that our swatch is the same height as our border so just move it up line up the bottom the starting chain with this bottom of your border there so that's like so and there we go so i can now see if you look at that there you can see it's the same height as well so i haven't got to adjust the um the stitches i use if you find sometimes you might find that you make your trebles a little shorter than than i did and you'll find that maybe it's a little bit 
lower and if that's the case what you'll need to do is make another little swatch using the same hook because the width is right so as long as the width is right that's fine and then um but instead of you'll take you can't change this first row the first row the half trebles is the equivalent of the raised trebles on on the foundation row we did at the start of the border so you can't change that but what you can do is take one or other of these half treble rows and replace that with a treble row and hopefully that would then make it the right height if you found that your border was taller then you'll take one of the treble rows and make that half trebles so just this, adjust the stitch you use to make sure it, it's the right height so once you've done all that um, come back and I will show you how to do the last bit of the border border two okay, so now you have done your little tension swatch and you have got your correct hook size and you know which stitch is going to do on which rows then we can get started on the back one thing I would just say um, for me I have now got because like we said the first the first row the first round has already been done as our foundation round so we've got four more rounds we're going to have to do and I know I've got to, from my little tension swatch, that I've got to do two half treble rounds and two treble rounds. So what I, what I prefer to do with that is make the last round, if possible, a treble round. Just because um, if, you, if you've ever looked at the way a half treble is constructed, it kind of, the, the top loops just go further to the right. So they almost look like they're the previous stitch. Um, and that can make it a little trickier for when we come to join the two together but if you end with a treble one that's easy if you can't then that's fine you just bear that in mind okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to start with a half treble round so I can do half treble treble half treble treble that's how I'm going to split mine you decide what you need to do for yours so whichever you're doing you just pick one of the um, two chain corner spaces from the foundation round so we're now back with the wrong side facing us and we're going to put any any corner doesn't matter so I'm going to start with this one here and I'm going to start like I said with a standing half treble in this first corner oh well I would do if I didn't drop me loop okay hold that end so there is my starting half treble I don't know if you, you probably can't see with a standing one but the loop does go further across so now whether it's a treble or a half treble fine you do whatever you need to do for your round we then do two chain and then the two trebles or half trebles in that same corner space so we haven't what we're going to do we're going to complete this corner with a half treble in there at the end of the round um, that just keeps the corners neater so that you you don't end up with these little, little chains where you up here they can all be kept nice and neat in the corner I'll explain that more when I get there so now it's really simple it's just a case of whichever stitch you're doing to do that all the way across to the next corner so I'm doing half trebles you may be doing the same or you may be doing trebles depending on what your gauge swatch told you so just carry on like so until you get to the next corner and then in the corner it's just two trebles or half trebles two chain and then another two of whichever stitch you're doing so it's simple as that and then carry on all the way around and I will see you when we are ready or when we get to the end here of our sort of second round of round two because we've already done the first one uh, second round of border two right I have now got to the end of round two of border two um so I've just worked my last half treble into the last stitch there and but just got mustn't forget remember we only started with one half treble to chain two half trebles there or you may be using trebles but whichever we only started with one stitch before the two chain space we just need to make sure we pop our last stitch of the round in there so now that's completed that corner and then remember because this is a half treble it's slightly weird but to slip stitch into there okay so that's that corner completed now to start round three and actually rounds four and five will be exactly the same 
just obviously the stitch you use depends on the outcome of your gauge swatch when you did it so we slip stitch into that two chain space and then if you're going to be doing half trebles you'll make four chains which will count as one half treble two chain if you're doing trebles like i will be on this round it's five so one two three four five trebles so that's our uh, five chain so that's our first treble and then two chain and then we work two trebles. what i'm going to do i'm just going to pick that little up in there just to hold that secure okay um i still need to weave it in at the end but i'll just keep it out of the way okay so this is what i was talking about with working into the half trebles if you see this is the half treble so the, the top loops for that are right over there and they look like they're one of the chains in the corner but we have to make sure because we want to keep our stitch count correct we have to make sure we work into there so so there we go when you're doing looks strange but that is the correct loop for that stitch okay so now we just carry on along as we did before working trebles or half trebles whichever you need to do and then in the corners every corner two chain space you just make two trebles half trebles two chain and then two more stitches so if you just do that um you'll be able to start the same way as we did in this corner as well every time so when you get to the end you'll actually you won't be slip stitching into a stitch this time it'll be into either the second or third chain depending on whether you were doing half trebles or trebles so make sure you then leave yourself your two chain after that okay so you carry on round and do that for the next for this round and the following two and when you've got a total of five rounds which includes this foundation one you should have a border that's the same height as your border one and then i'll come back and we will join the two together okay so once we've now completed um, the last round of a border what we need to do what I've now done I've actually done an invisible join again here and you say it hardly even looks like the, the chains that started it there it just looks like an ordinary stitch um, so that they say by doing the invisible join it keeps a lovely neat edge and it's much easier to know where all your stitches are so what you need to do now is to uh, make sure you've secured all of the ends that you created when you're making your border so for border two there should just be two i mean obviously if you joined the yarn there's some more elsewhere but make sure they're all nice and secure and also because on the on the border two we have these chain spaces in the corners what we want to make sure is that all our ends are pointing away from there so just so over time they could slip through but if they're pointing in the other direction that's very very unlikely to happen okay so once all your ends are secure we can now join it together so hook size what you want to do is use the smallest hook you used on the border so if you use the same size for your border two as you did border one then that's fine you just use the same hook again if you found that you need to drop down a size for the back then just do just use the, the smaller hook for that so whichever hook you're using pick it up and we're going to start well first of all we need to turn it over so with the right side of your blanket facing you again what we've got to do is pick up our yarn and i can find the end of it and then we're going to start with a standing double crochet and what we're going to do is we're going to pop that through the two chain space in the corner on our border one and the same on border two so we're working through those two chain spaces together and we're going to do standing double crochet and then we'll follow that whoops with two more so you have three double crochets in your corner two chain space and now simply all we're going to do is we're now going to work all the way around the blanket joining the two together with double crochets so so those two loops at the front and then just make sure you're in that first stitch after the chain space there when you start and join them together so it's as simple as that I'm just going to do a round double crochets 
joining both borders together and then when you get to the corners if you've got your stitch counts correct you should get exactly to the corner on the um, on both borders at the same time they should marry up I didn't quite miss get that last loop did I so yeah go around like that and then when you get to the corner two, two chain spaces just make sure you work three double crochets there so we're going through both borders all the way around most of it will be in joining the top the top loops of the two borders like that and then when you get to the board the corner it's three double crochets in the border and then you will be done <laughs>